Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Zero Davla. Welcome back to Save Our System IT. This is the first video of the BusyBox series and we will start off the video with the ACPID command. Basically, ACPID notifies the user space processes, a modern operating system separate their virtual memory into user space and kernel space, of ACPI event or advanced configuration and power interface that interacts with the uh, hardware components. ACPID should be started during the system boot and will run as a background process by default. It will open an event file slash proc slash ACPI slash event by default and attempt to read whole lines which represent ACPI events. If the event file does not exist, ACP will attempt to connect to the Linux kernel via the input layer and netlink. When an ACPI event is received from one of these sources, ACP will examine a list of rules and execute the rules that matches the event. Uh, ACP will ignore all incoming ACPI events if a log file exists though, such as a slash var slash log slash ACP. Rules are defined by simple configuration files. ACP will look in a configuration directory and parse all regular files with names that consist entirely of upper and lowercase letters, digits, underscores, and hyphens. Each file must define two things, an event and an action. Any blank lines or lines where the first character is a hash uh, are ignored. Extraneous lines are flagged as warnings but are not fatal and each line has three tokens. The key, a literal equal sign and the value. The key can be up to 63 characters and is case insensitive. But why space matters? The value can be up to 511 characters and is case and why space sensitive. The adjust timex command offers the user access to the variables of the kernel that keep time. Anyone can print out the values of these variables, but only the super user can do any sort of modification to them. Linux uses David L. Mill's clock adjustment algorithm. The system called Adjust Timex reads and optionally sets adjustment parameters for this algorithm. It takes a pointer to a Timex structure, updates kernel parameters from a selected field uh, values, and uh, returns the same structure updated with the current kernel values. The AR program creates, modifies, and extracts from archives. An archive is a singular file holding a collection of other files in a structure that makes it possible to retrieve the original individual files, called members of the archive. The original files' contents, modes, permissions, timestamps, owners, and groups are preserved inside the archive and can be restored on extraction. GNUAR can maintain archives whose members have names of any length, however, depending on how AR is configured on your system, a limit on uh, member name length may be imposed for compatibility with archive formats maintained with other tools. If it exists, the limit is often 15 characters, typical of formats related to A.out, or 16 characters typical of formats related to COF. AR is considered a binary utility because archives of this sort are most often used as libraries holding commonly needed subroutines. ARP manipulates or displays the kernel's IPv4 uh, network neighbor cache. It can add entries to the table, delete one, or display the current content. ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol, which is used to find the media access control address of a network neighbor for a given IP version 4 address. ARP with no mode specifier will print the current content of the table. It is possible to limit the number of entries printed by specifying a hardware address type, interface name, or host address. ARP hyphen the address will delete an ARP table entry. Root or netadmin privilege is required to do this. The entry is found by IP address. If a host name is given, it will be resolved before looking up the entry in the ARP table. ARP-S address hardware address is used to set up a new table entry. The format of the hardware address parameter is dependent on the hardware class, but for most classes one can assume that the usual presentation can be used. For the Ethernet class, this is 6 bytes in hexadecimal, separated by colons. When adding uh, proxy ARP entries, that is those with the published flag set, a net mask may be specified to proxy ARP for entire subnets. This is not good practice, but it is supported by older kernels because it can be useful. If the temp flag is not supplied entries, it will be permanently stored in the ARP cache. To simplify setting up entries for one of your own network interfaces, you can use the ARP uh, hyphen capital DS address interface name form. In that case, the hardware address is taken from the interface with a specified name. The ARP utility sends ARP and or ICMP requests to the specified host and displays the replies. The host may be specified by its host name, its IP address or its MAC address. One request is sent each second. When pinging an IP, an ARP who has query is sent. 
When pinging a MAC address, a directed broadcast ICMP echo request is sent. And note on timing. ERP packets are usually replied to on a local area network so fast that the OS uh, task scheduler can't keep up uh, to get exact enough timing. On an idle system, the round trip times uh, will be pretty much accurate, but with more load, the timing gets less exact. Uh, to get more exact timing on a non-idle system, uh, re nice ARP ping to 15 or so. So the command would be nice-n-15 ARP ping foobar. This is not just an issue with ARP ping, it's also an issue with uh, the normal ping, uh, but it doesn't show up as much with ping since ARP ping packets when pinging an IP address don't reverse the IP stack when received and are therefore replied to faster. Ash is a shell interpreter called Armquist shell, just like Bash is a shell interpreter called Born Again shell. And if you call it without additional arguments, it just drops us in an interactive session with an Ash shell. The original form of the shell was extremely tiny, and for the very same reason, it was very agile to work with, but lacked advanced utilities like terminal editing with editors such as uh, Vim or Emacs, which made its use as a main interpreter pretty difficult. But nevertheless, it's the main shell used in BusyBox, uh, but it is limited and has its own syntax, so bash scripts might not work as you would expect expect in Ash or might not work at all. Awk is basically a programming language for editing text files, and Mock is basically an interpreter for that programming language. The Awk language is useful for manipulation of data files, text retrieval and processing, and for prototyping and experimenting with algorithms. An Awk program is a sequence of pattern action pairs and function definitions. Short programs are entered on the command line usually in closing quotation marks to avoid shell interpretation. Longer programs can be read in from a file with the hyphen F option. Data input is read from a list of files on the command line or from standard input when the list is empty. The input is broken into records as determined by the record separator variable rs. Initially rs uh, was 4 slash n, so a new line, and the records are synonymous with lines. Each record is compared against each pattern and if it matches, the program test for action is executed. The base name command strips the directory and suffix from file names, so it prints the file name with uh, any leading directory component removed. If we specify it, you can also remove a trailing suffix. And that's about it for today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Any questions you might have are to be left down in the comment section or on our website www.sosit.co. Again, that's www.sosit.co. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.